rock star coat. Now you, you know this is the bomb. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. This is Ginger Logan Cannon's heaven. Woo-wee. Yellow is gorgeous. And her hell. What's the one? This is I already paid for this. I just oh, hadn't picked it up. Oh, I love the red. She's a self-proclaimed shopping addict. I already have this collection. Let loose in her favorite store. I love this jacket. And the pants. Oh, and you can party like a rock star. This is cold. If you don't wear the jacket, you wear this. Dress. But her psychiatrist, that's him over there, he's told her she's not allowed to buy anything. It's like taking an alcoholic to a bar. I think I'm getting sick. <laughs> a key moment in her therapy. See, Ginger has made a habit of breaking the 10th commandment. But you really should have a real leopard coat. They're called the ginger pop. Had to have those. She covets not just what her neighbors have, but even what they don't have. <laughs> They're great! What's on display at the mall. Clothing, That's shoes, nice objects, nice. often priced way beyond her means. And the jacket was like $1,800. Her husband built her a new set of closets in the garage. These closets out here hold summer wear. This is a personal question. Yes. How much debt are you in right now? Oh, $280,000. $280,000. Is that a shocking number to you? Very much. That's a lot of money for a woman who spent 30 years as a parole officer making $100,000 a year. She has filed for bankruptcy twice. If I look at all the money, the thousands of dollars I've spent over the years to where I am now, I think what I could have done with that money. That's, that's kind of sad to me. But beyond the Yo. sadness over her finances, uh, there's something much deeper. Yeah. Which is why, after years of failed attempts to stop, Ginger agreed to let us introduce her to Dr. Charles Sophie, a therapist who specializes in breaking addictions. People laugh about shopaholics. Right. People think it's a joke. Even her friends are saying, ah, you don't have a problem. It's, it's well, not a real addiction. So what's the big deal? You buy a dress or two. Right. But the issue is the impact and the meaning it has globally in your life. Oh, God, he's in Beverly Hills. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. I get to drive. I thought, woo, what a great place to have an office. Right. <laughs> Our cameras followed Ginger through four months of therapy. Or were you scared driving up here today? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I Her would, nervous I would laugh like eventually giving way oh, to tears. Here. Here's your tissue. I hate to cry. Why? Um, one, it messes up your makeup and you look horrible. I just hate it. <laughs> a few things become clear right away. She's not happy in her job, her marriage is struggling, and her shopping addiction, birthday. it's not so really about, about shopping can. at all. It's one of the few times you may feel, and that's not a good thing. For Ginger, Dr. Sophie says, shopping triggers a pleasurable chemical rush in the brain, just like any drug. Wow. It's me and You're whatever. floating. Floating. But like a binge eater, after Ginger covets and spends more than she has, she feels remorse. Then I start driving home. Yeah, you're high and then you're down. And then you start to feel like, was that really necessary, which you just did? What Dr. Sophie wants to do is break that cycle. But to do that, he has to dig deeper into her past. Appreciating fine clothing certainly runs in Ginger's family. Her father was an impeccably dressed ladies' man. My dad would take his credit card out, give it to them, he'd sit down with a newspaper, and go, and I mean, for about two hours, I would just be And that's going where it started, too. Ginger confesses her father was also an alcoholic, an addictive personality that may be genetic. I was a typical little girl who just worshiped her dad, but I've made excuses for him my entire life. And another secret emerges. Ginger was the victim of a racially motivated attack in the 1960s. But he just beat my face to a pulp. Ginger and her family never spoke of the beating. Dr. Sophie says her tendency to disconnect from emotion is a big part of the reason Ginger shops. It's your Band-Aid, and you're going to have to find other more appropriate, less expensive Band-Aids, like talking about how you feel and dealing with yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. Look at that. That's so me. One of the most difficult pressures, it turns out, Ginger's personal shoppers and friends who shop with her. She compares them to drinking buddies. That's my girl. <laughs> That's like somebody bringing you cocaine and Absolutely. just take Absolutely, the crack addiction. The crack yeah. man comes right to my house. I walked away from a suit that was about $1,300. Congratulations. I usually go back and get it. You're almost getting sober. I'm getting there. You're getting sober. <laughs> and now, 
it's time to face her addiction head on. This is home for me. An outing to the Tony St. John's shop, her favorite store, where a woman's suit can go for $2,000. We're going to shop. We're going to go in there. We're going to meet these people. You're going to show me what excites you. Oh, looking. Stuart. <laughs> and then we're going to try stuff on. We'll mm. pick out like three of your top favorites. <sighs> and then we're going to leave empty handed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, looking good, looking good. Maxine is Ginger's personal shopper. Ginger has never been in this store without purchasing something. Oh, my goodness. What do you love about it? The way it feels, the way it fits. Sometimes they may not talk to you, but they'll talk to your clothing. Okay, so let's translate that. It gives you self-esteem. This is an addiction because it gives you that excitement, that heart pounding. <sighs> This is like, ready, set, go. But wait, let, wait. <laughs> let's, let's talk. How do you feel? I feel really great. I'm smiling from here to here. Do you think you'll be smiling when we leave? No, but somehow I have this undying feeling of getting ready to drop some, this gear to you. Boom! I'm feeling great. Oh. Ginger? Yeah? You're still excited in there? Yes, I am. <laughs> What's our goal, though? Uh, healing and... What's our goal today? This is killing me. If you never shopped, you'd be running around in last season's clothes. What's the other way to think about that? Um, that I'm going to control when I shop and right. how I shop. God, I could go to my sorority board meeting with this on. It would be perfect. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wear something in the closet that I already have this red and white. Ugh. And what do you think about it? I think that I have a whole red section. At home. And don't need this. Yeah, but you don't want to wear the same thing, Dr. Sophie. I mean, this is so me. Take them out to Maxine. Say, thank you, but no thank you. <laughs> oh, God. In front of everybody? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hi, Maxine. So, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna leave all this here with you. Oh, you are. And um, I'm gonna leave that. Too. I'm gonna leave everything here. Okay. I'm not gonna shop today. Okay. And uh, I want you to give me a hug because you okay. know I love coming out here with you. Yeah. And I'm gonna be fine. Yes. And I'm gonna, do, uh, I. Oh my God, this. Oh, Jesus. Leaving that store empty-handed is the breakthrough Christ. Ginger needed. Ah. When I go. Got in my car and started up, and there were no bags with me. And I was sitting there thinking, I actually did that. I, that was kind of empowering. This is Rodeo Drive, yes. Beverly Hills. Is it hard for you to walk by all this and not Absol go inside? Absolutely. Uh, you know, for me, walking by and looking at uh, something like that and not going, it's like a punishment. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> But it's a growing thing. Uh, we went through this last week, and so it's not as hard today. When we last saw Ginger, she was in a better place. Look at these. They've never been worn. Purging her closets, giving clothing to charity. You know, it's like I'm in a fork in a row where I almost feel like I'm two people. There's like the old Ginger and the new Ginger, and it becomes a battle of your own personality. In the past couple of months, Ginger estimates she's avoided spending $10,000 on clothing. She says she's not healed yet, but she's anxious to get there. Can you imagine a day when you walk down Rodeo Drive and don't even look at the stores? Can you imagine that? I'll always look, but I don't think it'll mean as much to me. This is Kate Snow for Nightline in Los Angeles.